Hello, my name is Mark Pachaboski. I work for Ascent. We develop CAD training curriculum. Um, today, we're going to take a look at what's new in CATIA V5 2024, specifically the Sketcher Workbench. Uh, this is a part two video, part one. Um, if you haven't seen part one, you should take a moment to go look at that one first if you can. Uh, here we're specifically going to look at the reorder children function that is now available within a sketch when outputs have been created. Uh, we will also take a look at the profile tangency command and how it can quickly apply tangencies to a complex profile uh, where it's connected to other endpoints. Another new function in the Sketcher Workbench in CATIA V5 2024 is the ability to reorder um, output features. Now, output features exist within a sketch when they're created. So here we have Sketch 3. Output features were of some sketch geometry. We have Profile 4, 5, and 6. Uh, you have to be exited out of the sketch for this to work. But if you want to reorder those output features, those profiles in this case, you can right click on the outputs node, go to whatever the name of it is, object, so ob outputs object, and choose reorder children. The reorder children dialog box appears, and we could grab the profile number four and move it down all the way to the bottom so that it shows up at the end. Now these can be renamed to be whatever you'd like, but in prior versions of CATIA, you'd have to delete these profiles and recreate them in the order you wanted if you didn't like the order that was there, or you had to accept what was there. Again, these outputs are created from within the sketch. Using the tools toolbar, you'll be able to define various output features. In this example, we're going to take a look at how the output feature now allows us to reorder its children when it's been used. So for example, here we have a sketch uh, with a number of profiles in it. Um, the way this sketch is created without any outputs means that all of it needs to be used to create your geometry. So if I create to build a pad and select it on that sketch, all of it's used and we end up with cavities in the center. So the circles and the rectangles there end up as pockets throughout the feature without actually using the pocket command. Now what if I wanted to be able to build various thickness uh, solids out of those shapes to kind of stack them on top of one another instead of have cavities built into them? Well what I can do is modify my sketch and use the output features. This can be done through the use of the tools toolbar which you see right here. And there's a variety of different output features I'm simply going to go to the multiple profile feature. It finds all of that geometry outline, including the rectangle in the center, the rectangle on the outside, and the circles. And I'll say select all, and OK. That creates the five profiles we see there. Now, in older versions of CATIA, if you realize that that rectangle should have been the first one instead of the last one, you'd have to delete these and recreate them in the order that you wish to have them in. If we want to be able to reorder them, uh, what we can do is rename them if necessary, but I'm going to exit my sketch, take those profile features, and if I right click on outputs, I can go to whatever the name of it is object, so outputs object, and say reorder children. That comes up with a list of all of its children, all of those profiles. Again, you could rename these if they're helpful. But I could take that rectangle and move it all the way to the top of the list. And I could grab that circle, and maybe I want all the circles at the bottom. So I'll move that one down. I'll move that one down. And I can take that circle and that rectangle, and I can swap them. So they'll swap positions in the dialog box. Actually, there you go. Select it, then hit swap, then choose which one you're swapping it with. And that's how we can reorder um, children within the outputs function. The last example we're going to take a look at for new functionality within the Sketcher Workbench in CATIA V5 2024 is the Profile Tangency function. What this does is it quickly applies tangencies to any lines and arcs that are connected end-to-end -end that don't already exist. 
So sometimes there's many ways this can be created and you can set this up, but here I drew some lines and arcs that are connected end to end, but do not have rules forcing them to be tangent to one another. So to use profile tangency, there's a little bit of a setup. First, I select all the geometry. But to do that, I clicked one line. I right clicked on it and I said auto search. You can actually see it available right there. When I chose auto search, it grabbed all the lines that were connected end to end. Once they're all selected, I then right click on any one of these and I go to selected objects and say profile tangency. Uh, that creates the tangency constraints on all of the vertices where a line and an arc or an arc and an arc are connected to one another. You can speed that process up quite a bit. Even though there are other ways this can be done, that's one of the fastest ways to apply many of them at once. In this example, we're going to take a look at how the profile tangency command works within the Sketcher workbench. Uh, to do this, I'm going to click on the profile command. And when profile is selected, Sketch Tools pops up. And we have some options here to make sure that things are geometrically constrained. Uh, which can mean that if a arc and a line are aligned in such a way that they're tangent to one another, it actually creates the rule that they're tangent. Now, sometimes it gets turned on or off by accident or on purpose, but I'm going to say this is turned off, and I'm going to draw my shape. Now, I'm going to come in here and draw an arc afterwards, which that is tangent, but there's no rule saying it has to stay that way. And then I'm going to draw a line that's a little off from tangent, and I'll draw an angled line. I'll draw a corner that's just kind of roughing this in. It's not perfect, but sometimes it's quicker that way to get the rough shape that we need. And I realize that that corner didn't clean up the way I wanted it to, so I'll go to trim and I'll trim that into that line. Now, I want those edges to all be tangent to one another. In older versions of Katia, you'd have to manually go in and Either select constraint and choose the arc, choose the line, right click and say tangency, uh, or you can use this command here, contact constraint, and select on those same two lines, and that'll make them tangent. But to do all of them, it takes a little bit of time and it'll be tedious. So, uh, with the um, profile tangency command, uh, there's a little process we want to do first. First, we select all these lines. There's a number of ways of doing that, but I'm going to start by selecting one of the lines, right-clicking on it, going to whatever the name of it is object, and saying Auto Search. With Auto Search, it grabs all of them that are connected end-to-end. -end. Now with them all selected, I'll right-click again on any one of those selected objects, go to the selected objects in the list, and this time I can say Profile Tangency. And where an arc and a line butted up against one another, it automatically made them tangent to one another. Okay, it's not the only way of doing this, but it's a good way of quickly doing it to a complex profile. 